Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture of Two-Face Flow. My name is Min Tang Li. I am currently a faculty at the Department of Power Mechanical Engineering in National Tsinghua University. Per the request from the university, I am recording and sharing this series of lecturing for NTHU Open Courseware. Today, let's talk about external condensation. The lecture notes of today's lecture are prepared based on these two reference books. In general, heat transfer to a surface by condensation when the surface temperature is less than the saturation temperature of the surrounding vapor. In the dropwise condensation, surface is covered by liquid droplets ranging from a few micrometers to agglomerations that are visible to the naked eyes. In the film condensation, however, entire surface is covered by the condensate which would flow on the surface and acts as a resistance to heat transfer between the vapor and the surface. The phenomena of nucleation for a liquid droplet in vapor is very similar to that for a nucleation of vapor bubbles in liquid that previously discussed. By definition, and the geometry of a liquid droplet formed on a solid surface the volume of the liquid droplet, the liquid to vapor interfacial area, and the area between the solid and the liquid interface can be determined as shown here. Considering a system of fluid that is contained in a cylinder, at the initial, the temperature and the pressure are at TV and the PV, respectively. The pressure of the vapor PV is lower than the saturation pressure corresponding to TV. So, the vapor is supersaturated. The initial free energy of the system is given by equation 4, where NT is the total number of moles in the system and the GV is the free energy per mole of the vapor phase. Sigma's SV is the surface free energy of the solid to vapor interface. After the formation of the liquid droplet embroil, the total free energy for the system is the sum of free energies correspond to bulk liquid, bulk vapor, and the interfaces between the vapor, liquid, and the solid phases. The change in free energy associated with the formation of this droplet embroil can then be defined as equation 7. GL is the free energy per mole of the liquid phase. NT equals NV plus NL, where NV is the number of moles of fluid in vapor phase, and NL is the number of moles of fluid in liquid phase. This ensures mass conservation. The relation of surface tension and contact angle in the force balance along the vapor-solid interface is also applied. If the size of the droplet is at an equilibrium radius Re, thermodynamics requires that the free energies of the vapor and the liquid phases should be equivalent. Tv equals Tl, and the pressure difference across the liquid to vapor interface follows the young laplace equation. By following a similar analysis as described previously, for the nucleation of a bubble in boiling. Taking Taylor series expansion of delta G as a function of R with respect to Re, it can be shown that the equilibrium condition corresponds to an unstable equilibrium. The delta G increases to a maximum value as the radius of the droplet increases. Then, decreases after the radius of the droplet surpassed Re. Therefore, embryos having a radius less than Re spontaneously disappear. Embryos having a radius greater than Re spontaneously grow. Also similar to the analysis for a nucleation boiling, the rate of embryo formation J and the system conditions as well as fluid properties can be derived J represents the rate at which embryos of critical size are generated. As J increases, 
the probability that a bubble will exceed critical size grows spontaneously becomes greater. If a threshold value of J can be specified, the corresponding supersaturated limit of temperature or pressure can be determined for a given system. Note that the results of J for contact angle at 180 is equivalent to homogeneous nucleation. Contact angles for most real systems are between 0 to 110. For the combination of metal surfaces with non-metallic liquids, the contact angle is often below 50. Therefore, condensation usually can be initiated at solid surfaces in contact with vapor at a much lower supersaturation level comparing to that for homogeneous nucleation, given that the vapor weights the surface reasonably well. In practice, a thin microfilm of liquid is usually absorbed on all or a part of a solid surface, especially for high energy surfaces like metals. This absorbed liquid molecules on the surface can also serve as nuclei for condensation. Usually, the condensation process begins with formation of a very small droplets, especially if the surface is poorly weighted. Dropwise condensation is generally preferable for high heat transfer coefficient as compared with film condensation, since the most effective heat transfer associated with condensation happens on the contact region of liquid, vapor, and solid triple phases. The dropwise condensation could also be observed on solid with high surface energy. This is possibly due to the contamination of the surface with hydrophobic species. For condensation on a vertical plate, droplets form and grow on the solid surface would merge to big droplets and fall due to gravity. As the big droplet is rolling on the surface, it can effectively merge with other droplets on the path and expose those active sites for initiating the condensation process again. This sweeping process contributes to the high heat transfer for dropwise condensation as shown in this figure on the left. The heat transfer analysis model for dropwise condensation are generally proposed with a configuration as shown by this figure. The minimum size of the droplet can be determined by theory. The radius at equilibrium, RE, evaluated from the system free energy analysis as previously described, can be assumed as the minimum possible radius. On this basis, Droplets with bigger sizes could be investigated and counted from images obtained from experiments. The total temperature difference for the heat transfer of the system is defined as T sat minus T wall, which is to be used in the Newton's law of cooling. This temperature difference is composed of three parts. The temperature drop associated with the interface resistance the capillary depression of the equilibrium saturation temperature, and the temperature drop by conduction resistance through the droplet. The interfacial resistance can be determined from applying kinetic theory analysis as described in Chapter 4 of Reference 1. The capillary depression on the temperature difference can be determined from equation 18 and applying the Clapeyron equation with ideal gas. The temperature drop by conduction resistance can be evaluated by using basic heat conduction theory. With these estimations on the resistance of each droplet, the overall heat transfer coefficient for dropwise condensation can be determined from integration of the contributions from droplets with all sizes on the surface. Equation 35 shows an example of a model in such kind. Here, 
N, K1, K2, and the sigma hat are empirical values to be determined from experimental data. As previously noted, dropwise condensation is generally the preferred mode for condensation heat transfer, where the heat transfer coefficient can be as much as an order of magnitude higher than that for film condensation under the same conditions. The dropwise condensation on a hydrophilic solid surface can be achieved by using hydrophobic coating as promoters. Figure 6 shows a comparison of water steam condensation on surfaces with and without promoter. Here are two correlations for reference. Owing to the complexity of dropwise condensation, since it is highly affected by the properties of the surface, these correlations are generally agree well only with data for specific surface conditions and fluid. However, it can be seen that at large temperature differences between the wall and the saturation vapor temperature, the equivalent heat transfer with dropwise condensation is much more effective than that with film-wise condensation only. For film-wise condensation, theoretical solutions could be derived by applying a boundary layer analysis. For instance, considering a solid plate placed vertically in a saturated vapor environment, the temperature of the plate surface is maintained as subcooled with respect to the vapor. Further assumptions include the flow in the liquid film is laminar, constant properties of fluids. Subcooling of liquid is negligible in the energy balance. Inertia effects are negligible in the momentum balance. The vapor is stationary and exerts no drag to the liquid film. The liquid vapor interface is smooth. Heat transfer across the film is by conduction only. A set of continuity equation, momentum equation, and the energy equation can be obtained as shown here on the slide. Note that the pressure gradient in the liquid film, partial P, partial X, is approximated by the hydrostatic pressure gradient in the vapor phase. Similar to classical boundary layer problems, this set of equations could be solved by integral method or by using similarity variable. The results including the thickness of the liquid film as function of x, the convective heat transfer coefficient or the neutral number and the mass flow rate of the fluid across the liquid vapor interface due to condensation. Detailed information regarding these derivations can be found in the references. The effect of subcooling and energy convection in the liquid film can be included by replacing the latent heat with this modified HLV prime, as shown by equation 55. Figure 9 shows the neutral number dependence on subcooling and fluid properties determined from similarity variable solution. For a large Reynolds number, the flow of the liquid film could become turbulence. For this condition, the governing equations for the conservation of mass, momentum, and energy balance can be revised by including the AD diffusivities of momentum and the heat. Solutions to this problem can be obtained by incorporating a postulated turbulent flow velocity profile for the film. The transition from laminar to turbulent flow may happen in the condensation liquid film. Three flow regimes may be identified in terms of a Reynolds number defined here. Note that this definition of a Reynolds number is actually similar to that used in previous slides, except that in the previous slides, a unit width of plate was considered. Here is a set of correlations 
for predicting the Neusel number provided in reference to. Depending on the value of Reynolds number, the flow and heat transfer characteristics may change from wave-free laminar flow to wavy laminar flow and eventually turbulent flow. Horizontal cylinders are often used in condensers for engineering systems. Correlations for condensation heat transfer on cylinder or spheres can be found from the references. In reference 1, a derivation of the correlation for a horizontal cylinder as shown here is provided in chapter 9. It shall be noted that the effective heat transfer for a bank of horizontal cylinder tubes as shown on the right figure is highly affected by the type of the liquid film between consecutive tubes. The heat transfer is usually more effective if the condensate is dripping. The reason is that the thickness of the liquid sheet is thinner in this case and the flow of the sheet is more agitated by those liquid drips and droplets. This disturbances to the liquid film enhances the condensation heat transfer across the liquid film. Here is a summary to this lecture. The condensation process can be categorized in two types namely the dropwise condensation and filmwise condensation. The mode of condensation is highly dependent on the combination of the surface condition and fluid properties. In general, dropwise condensation will provide more effective heat transfer as compared with filmwise condensation. For each mode, theoretical analysis or semi-empirical correlations could be applied for obtaining the heat transfer coefficient.